Okay, let's paint a landscape. Here's the wall. Now we just have to get the paint. So let's go to the store. I'm gonna show you the kind of products that I like to use. Not the exact products. I want you to know that you can use whatever you want. I'm showing you the kind because there's a lot of stuff out there that all works well. So let me show you the kind of paint, the kind of brushes, and then you use what you want. What's most important is the knowledge of what you're painting and why it looks the way it does. And that's what I'm gonna show you. So let's go to the store, get what we need, come back here and get familiar with the paint. Get started on this mural. So I'm at Walmart and I found this brush that I really like. So maybe you can find these at other department stores, but I really like when I find a tool for cheap because I'm all about the result and not how good I look while I'm getting there. And this synthetic bristle brush, you can see the angled cut on it. I love to use these. And you can, you can get a very similar brush at Michael's for like 25 bucks and it'll, it'll last longer. But I've used these on jobs and really liked the way they handled. So definitely a good tool when we get to the details. It's like five bucks. And you can find other similar brushes. You might get one that's flat. Feel free to get whatever kind of brush you like. What's important is that these, the, you know, they have like a blade tip to them. And I really like using these. The other brushes, just scrap them. This is the brush that you're looking for. Another helpful thing I'll get while I'm here are these Ziploc containers. I don't know what you call these things, but they're really helpful. There's like five of them. It costs $2.50 and it's very paint worthy. I'll mix, I'll use my primaries, mix all the colors that I need in these and then I'll be able to reuse them. And, and uh, the paint peels right out of them, you know, they're very convenient to reuse your, your paint. Now any paint store you go in is going to have a chart like this and you're just going to go to get your primaries to the most intense red you can find, get the most intense yellow you can find, get the most intense deep blue you can find, and that's your red, yellow, and blue primaries. But that's one way. They're going to take that color and they're going to use their tints that they have behind the counter to create that color in a paint base. Now, here's what I like to do. This, this is a, a real high quality, expensive kind of paint, but it's what I like because this is what you call a yellow base, where the base is already colored and it says it on the can. So it's not a color that's here that you're just picking out. This comes from the factory like this and it has better coverage and the tint will be more intense. They also have a red base that I like to use. Now, this is interior acrylic latex satin and I use satin or eggshell all the time. That's the sheen that I use and it's always this interior acrylic latex. And then they have for the blue, you would get the ultra deep base. See how this says ultra deep on it. That is what they would use to do a deep color like the blue that I use. And they would need to tint that behind the counter because there's, there's no factory tinted base that's in that deep blue. While I'm here at Sherman Williams, I'll also grab these purdy brushes. Don't get overwhelmed by all the brushes. There's always this wall of brushes. And honestly, they're all good. They're all gonna work. So just grab the price that you like. But let me show you what I like to use. I'd probably get one of these two inch right there. And I'd get the, this fatter handle, they call it a glide. You could get the thinner handle too. And that's just a skinnier brush. I would get one of these little one inch brushes like this one for my smaller details. I use these all the time. And I just always like to get the ones, this one says stiff on it. The more rigid the brush is, the better for me because I'm real abusive on the brushes and as you're, you know, just, just moving all, all over the wall, it's nice to have the bristles be as rigid as they can be. So I'd probably get the smallest one, I'd get a medium sized one, and then I would get a two and a half inch for my biggest size. And that would be like this one here. I like these a lot. And this also has the fatter handle on it that Purdy calls their, their glide. It says, just don't get the oil base brushes. This says, it says what they're for, so read the label. And don't be overwhelmed, like I said, about all the different kind of brushes. As long as it says that you can use it for latex paint, you're good. I'll also get a drop cloth while I'm here to protect the floor. So I'll pick this four by 12, because it just needs to run along the wall. It doesn't need to be covering the whole room. I'll also get tape. Standard contractor tape is usually this white color. You can get blue, which is less sticky. So if you're concerned about pulling paint off your wall, you may go with the blue. If you want to go the more expensive route and be even safer along, you know, then you can get the 
frog tape or something else. There's a lot of different brands out there, but it, it almost always relates to how sticky it is. You can read the label. I mean, it's just tape. I just get, I just get the white one. You're going to need a bucket. Really doesn't matter what kind you pick. Something else I'll keep with me the whole time I'm painting is some latex extender. So here's some made by brand XIM. But the keyword is latex extender because there are other brands that make the same kind of product. What it does is slows down the dry time of the paint and gives it more viscosity so it smears on the wall. So uh, we call it the open time, how fast the paint dries. It extends the open time of the paint. I'll keep that with me, add it to the water bucket and also add some to the paint if I'm having trouble with it drying too fast. So now I'm at Home Depot, this is where I like to get the white. So their Bear brand Ultra Pure White is the whitest that I can find. That's why I like it. And this is a gallon and it's in the, the eggshell sheen is what I like. The satin is a little shinier with this particular brand, so I like the eggshell. And probably all of the paint that I've referenced you could just get in quarts, not gallons, because you're not going to paint 20 murals like I am. Okay, the last color I'm gonna need is the black. So I'm here at Home Depot still, and I'm just gonna go straight to the, to the uh, Rust-Oleum Quartz. Just grab it right off the shelf. They've got satin black, which would be my preferred choice, but they also have flat black, and they also have semi-gloss black. Any of those will work. I'm just using for mixing. I'd go with the, the uh, shinier ones, actually, on this one before I go with the flat, because it's a little bit blacker. And while I'm here, I'd probably also grab a four inch roller. This one already has the cover on it, but if it didn't, I'd grab the cover as well. So it's called a four inch roller because this is four inches wide. And this is called the sleeve or the cover or the nap, but most of the time they're separate. These just have them all right together. So I just get that. All right, we got our materials. We're ready to go. Let's paint this mural. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is protect my floor and any other horizontal surfaces. So I'll just take the white contractor tape and I've got a baseboard that I need to protect down here. If you've got a baseboard that's painted or anything else that you have the slightest concern about paint peeling off because tape can peel paint off that's, that's already dry, then maybe you go with the lower tack tape that we talked about at the store the blue tape or the frog tape, whatever. Okay, so I, I just broke my tape right here because I want to show you how, how to put it on top of these switch plates also. Not that you need to be shown how to do this. I'm more showing you that you need to do it. Because the little splatters from the paint will get on, I mean, they're tiny and they'll get on everything that's facing up. I want you to get familiar with the brush that we're going to be using. I'm going to dip it in the paint, only a little. And I can see as I dip it in this paint that this paint has a pretty heavy consistency to it. So I'll probably end up adding some of that paint extender that I pointed out, which is what I have in this bottle. Just a different brand. See, this is a Wagner brand. The one I showed you was XIM, whatever. It serves the same purpose. Now see how I just have it on the end of the brush? Try to stay with that, only on the end of the brush. To keep it from dripping, if this was runnier paint, I would just hold it like this. And even runny paint will not drip nearly as bad as if you get good at rotating it like this. And then put it on the wall. Just slap the paint on the wall. But let me show you what you shouldn't do. You should not put the brush sideways against the wall. Because that's just going to goop up the paint high on your bristles. It's going to make a mess. Get used to keeping it pointed at the wall. The, bris the bristles are made to bend, so you bend them. If you're cutting a line, then you can see my hold on the brush right here. If you're cutting a line, point it at the wall and bend the bristles a little bit. And if it's loaded up with paint, I'm going to do this. See how when I go back and forth, I'm bending the bristles instead of tilting the brush way far. You know, I see a lot of this. This is not a good way to do it because it makes a mess. Got a little hair on the wall there. All right, so I'm, I'm just getting the paint in the bristles of the brush. Tip it again. See, just on the end of it like this. Now I do this really quickly, but if you're new at holding a brush, don't expect to feel real comfortable with it. Build up a comfort level by practicing. And this is what the kind of stuff I'm going to do as I'm mixing it. If I was cutting a line, I would just hold it steady and drag it slowly. See that sharp line that it makes right there? 
That's because this is a nice brush. A cheap brush that's real flared out on the ends won't do that nice hard edge for you. Notice how the bristles are bent, but the brush is pointed straight at the wall. I get a very sharp line. That's how I cut. The sharp lines get the hard edges. That might be a horizon, bright red horizon. <laughs> this would be called feathering when you're just going back and forth. I'm kind of using a figure eight motion. Now, the paint dries quick. That's an issue. So that's when we're gonna come in to a couple of uh, handy tools. One of those handy tools is a bucket of water. So now we've got paint in the brush. We've got some thick paint that wants to dry fast. Let's dip the brush in the water. Same way I did it. I only have this filled up a little bit. I'm not submerging the brush in water, dipping. See those drips coming off? So now watch now if I do this rotating. See, the drips aren't coming off. If I stop rotating, it immediately starts dripping. So you see this, this motion is helpful. Come up to the wall, start mixing that water in. You wanna be quick with this because the water immediately tries to drip down the wall. You just mix it in while you're going. All right, but the reason we have tape and drop cloth down is because it's gonna drip, so don't stress it. All right, so that's how I'm gonna add water as I'm working through the duration of the job. And then, uh, we also have paint extender, so let's apply some of that. First thing I'm going to do is put it in a separate bucket. And I'm just going to have this bucket of extender handy so that if I have issues with the paint drying too fast, that extender is going to be more effective than water in slowing down the dry time. And it kind of smooths out the viscosity of the paint. So now we'll do the same thing We've got our paint on the wall. This time we'll go into the extender. Same thing, just like I did with water, but this is the paint extender and it looks like milk. And you'll find it's just got a little bit different feel. It makes the paint last, it stays wet for longer, but it's not gonna buy you a ton of time. You know, it, it slows down the dry time. But you can see that it's it's flowing real smoothly. I can move quickly. This is real different from an oil-based paint. oil base is a lot stickier. This water base will go very quickly and it allows me to work fast when I'm doing murals. So this same technique of keeping the brush pointed at the wall and just something that's any size brush I use, any brush, I'm gonna follow that, that kind of technique. So conveniently for me, uh, I have a very smooth wall to work on but your wall may have a lot of texture and you may want to talk to a drywaller or just smooth it out yourself to get less texture because it really you can see on the spots where there are textures these little white pockets if it's more extreme they can make it hard to cut smooth lines and cover your surface you can also look to my video that I have posted on the on the Mural Joe YouTube channel I think I titled it how to use drywall mud Let's put this brush aside. So uh, it's, it's handy to have some plastic around. All right, this is just any old plastic bag. Instead of soak this in water, to store it, if we know we're gonna be using it later, don't wash it out, just wrap it in plastic. Because you may be getting into the same color anyway. Brush lasts longer. The, the fewer times you wash it out, the longer it lasts. So, Four inch roller. Let's learn how to use this guy. So let's do something fun and use a different color. See what happens when we mix it. I'll just roll it across the top of this yellow gallon. And this is the first time it's being dipped, so it's not gonna handle the same as after I, after I do it a few times, it'll, it'll feel a little different. Cause right now it's just soaking up the paint. I get that covered in paint. Same thing as the brush. I rotate it like this to keep it from dripping. And then I'm gonna roll it on the wall. Now this is the important thing. There's, there's this one way that I like to roll this where it's gonna pick up its own drips. And watch this 45 degree angle going sideways. See what happens? It's both sliding and rotating. Opposite 45 degree angle, go the other way. By rotating under, it's grabbing its own drips. And by sliding, it's not flicking splatters everywhere. I can use this method to mix paint. I wouldn't use it for fine detail, 
but if I'm doing larger scale stuff and I just need a first coat, such as in my gradient for the sky that I'm gonna show you, then I would use this technique to quickly mix larger amounts of paint. See, watch how I can speed this up. Because, because there's a lot of sliding going on, this isn't splattering me. So this is not to be confused with this method, straight rolling or up and down rolling. This is how you leave a lot of splatters. And if you're using a big roller just to cover a wall, yeah, you would roll like that. But this method has been really helpful for me just to mix colors. Now you can see that there's a lot more paint in it. It's gonna feel a little different. It'll soak up paint faster now when I dip it in the, the bucket of paint. Do more of the same thing. So you might wanna practice this. No worries on all of this big mess of color because it's just paint and we can paint right over it. The one thing that you do want to be aware of is that it can build up a texture. So you want to at least smooth it out so that it's not having a heavy build on the wall because sometimes that can show through additional layers of paint. I also want you to be aware that now that this wall has paint on it, any additional coats of paint are going to dry twice as fast because they're on top of an activated catalyst in this paint. And when I go on top of a all the way dry, non-activated wall, it's gonna last longer. So that's why I'm not painting up where we're gonna do the sky right now because I wanna be able to have more open time. So next time you're frustrated, this paint's drying too fast, I can't mix it. You might be painting over some that you just put on and it's speeding up your dry time. Wait 24 hours and then it'll work better for you. So this extender, this is one brand, there's many brands, but they're intended to be poured in the paint. So let's say I just pour this in my yellow. It's intended to be, it says four ounces per quart. And so, I mean, I've never, tried to measure that, and I don't feel like it, it compromises the quality of my mural. I just dip into the bucket. So I want you to understand that I'm breaking the rules on the bottle, and I don't care one bit about that. So I just dip it in the bucket of extender like I showed you, and I just mix it that way. But I also just now poured it in the yellow, and I can just mix it around in there. Okay, don't be afraid of paint. You can stick your hand in it. Got a big old rag here, and I can just wipe my finger on the wall, I can clean it off on the rag, smear it around. But now my paint is has that mixed in it from the can, and so now I have a smoother viscosity coming straight out of the can. The reason I don't do that is, is because it only lasts so long, and I don't like to affect the entire batch of paint for only when I only need a little bit. So I just put my brush in it, that's easier for me. You do whatever you want. So now that we're familiar with the, the uh, extender that we use, the tools we're gonna be using, we can learn the rest as we go. It's time to start on some sky painting techniques. So let me show you how I'm gonna lay that out.